Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 22nd, and it is a beautiful crisp fall morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Yesterday rained, so it's a little damp, but uh, yeah, it looked, shaping up to be a very nice Sunday. Uh, well, lots of lots of things to talk about today. I, I got a couple of bits of unfortunate news that I want to get out of the way right, right at the outset. Um, the first is... Uh, if you watch the Friday night live stream, uh, my wife's aunt, uh, Aunt Evelyn, was uh, doing very poorly. She was in the hospital, and uh, I asked folks to pray for her and the family. And uh, sadly, uh, Aunt Evelyn passed away yesterday. Uh, but on the the sort of bright side of things, uh, all of her family was able to get there. You know, she had family that was out in California that had to travel and all that, and they were able to get there and spend some time with her before she uh, she finally passed. So. Uh, She's gone on to the next stage, and I really appreciate all the all the prayers that were that were sent out for her. Uh, I think they worked. Uh, she she passed very peacefully, and uh, you know continue to to please uh, keep her and uh, keep her family in uh, in your prayers and you know good thoughts and all that stuff. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, your wife is doing well. She's out in Pittsburgh right now with her family. This also happened as these things often. <laughs> do seem to happen uh, at the same time that a wedding was going on, so it, it's created a bit of chaos. Uh, but uh, they'll they'll sort through it, and they they will all be fine. Um, the other piece of news I have, which uh, you know it's it's good and bad, is uh, I heard from our our good friend Daniel Tobias over in Israel. Uh, this is the the, the shepherd uh, that we had on the live stream uh, years ago, and you know he's a you know, frequently shows up. He's he's become a a, a dear friend of mine uh, through our email correspondences and and, and uh, just a, just a fine gentleman. Uh, several folks have asked, you know, have I heard from him? And I, I sent him an email just to check in, and he responded to me. Uh, he's he's well. Uh, he uh, has been called up into active service, and uh, couldn't speak much about that, probably because of time restrictions as well as just you know, security issues I'm sure uh, but just wanted to let everyone know that he's well although things are not good uh, you know he talked about the son of a friend who was killed and uh, you know it's it's bad it's a it's a bad situation that he's in so please continue to keep Daniel and, and everyone uh, there in, in, in Israel in, in your, your prayers and, and good thoughts and, and all that uh, he very much appreciated all the uh, the concern and and the uh, the thoughts of, of the folks in the YTPC, and he said uh, the pipe is one thing that's getting him through the hard times. So uh, I'll keep you posted if I hear more from him. Although I did tell him uh, that we'd be thinking of him, and no need to reply because I know he's got better things to do. So uh, I'm not expecting anything soon, but if I get news from him, I'll certainly keep you updated on on, on Daniel. So, uh, yeah, oh, one more, uh, just to sort of move more into levity here, uh, one more bit of news is uh, I got an email this morning, a nasty gram from YouTube telling me that our Friday night live stream last Friday was adult restricted. I don't know what we did. <laughs> Every once in a while this happens now, and uh, I honestly can't think of anything that we did on Friday that would have led to that. Uh, I've been thinking about adult restricting the whole channel just because I don't want kids watching anyway But if I do that, then you have to be logged into YouTube to watch the video And I don't know how much of my audience uh, that would affect, you know, I don't want to Because you know the vast majority of my audience are not people that comment and they're not people that watch the live stream So I might be blocking out, you know, 50% of the folks that watch this so uh, yeah, I I got age restricted. We got age restricted on the Friday night live stream. Not sure why, but it's it, it always makes me chuckle when I see that because I don't want kids watching anyway. All right, so the main event today. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm not smoking anything. <laughs> so I've got my Phil Rivara uh, Apple. I think it's an Apple. I'm never sure, but uh, wonderful pipe. I love this pipe. It's light. It's uh, a good clencher, great pipe, and uh, I just wish it was bigger. If, if it had a bowl that was twice this size, it would look ridiculous. But it would, <laughs> it would have to be the same weight. So anyway, uh, the tobacco 
is uh, the Tobacco of the Week, chosen by the folks on the, uh, the live stream on Friday night. And this is some McClellan Brindle Flake from 2010. And I smoked the, about a half a bowl on Friday night because when I opened this, it was very dry. But I rehydrated it, and we're going to load up some, some nicely aged Brindle Flake here. I'll show you some of the flakes. Now, these have broken up quite a bit from being so dry but hopefully you can see there uh, nice dark somewhat mottled flake this is a pure Virginia and uh, it I did look at some reviews just to get an idea of how it was thought of back in the day uh, back in the day 2010 shouldn't be thought of as back in the day but and uh, you know honestly the reviews were mixed it was considered to be a good tobacco but not necessarily one of the stars of the McClellan line. Uh, interestingly this is one that was reported to have less of the McClellan topping which McClellan claims wasn't there uh, which I always thought was vinegar. Um, other folks refer to it as a ketchup or barbecue flavor or smell. I guess smell is more appropriate. I never liked it because I, I found it to be very tangy. Um, but when I smoked this on Friday night, I was surprised that it had none of that. I certainly don't pick up any of that. It just smells like a nicely aged Virginia. So, interestingly, the review said that it had less of that topping. And uh, that's consistent, with, certainly, with my experience. But also, folks pointed out on Friday night that that topping will dissipate over time, especially since it dried. Let's see what we got here. This is the first bowl I've smoked since I've rehydrated it. And uh, when first light, it's very nice. It's, it's just a good, clean Virginia. Um, I was getting a lot of spice off of it on Friday. Let's see if that continues. I left my Zippo upstairs, so I'm using my druggy lighter here. Uh, I thought about covering that with black tape or something. I can't get the sticker off. It doesn't seem to be a sticker. Or if it is, it's like, I don't know, it's, it just, I can't find a seam on it. But you know what? It's funny. It was an emergency lighter purchase, any port in the storm. Hey, Big Dave, copious amounts of white smoke. My buddy Big Dave likes that. Still getting that spice on the retro ale. That's really surprising for a straight Virginia. But certainly no periki taste on the palate, which is consistent with the recipe. From what I saw uh, with a very quick look at tobacco reviews, um, it had mixed reviews, as I said. Um, I think the hardcore McClellan fans probably didn't like it because it was somewhat different from their, uh, their usual offering in terms of the lack of uh, vinegar. However, it was the, the folks that liked the, uh, you know, it was compared to things like Christmas cheer. So, you know, those, <clears throat> those were all high quality Virginia blends and well, all the McClellans were, to be, to be honest. Not my cup of tea, but good stuff. Mm, this is, this is very nice. It's, um, it's aged well. It's very smooth. It's uh, certainly sweet. Deeply sweet. But it's got some high notes in there too, which is kind of interesting. Maybe that's 
that's the brindle. You know, it's probably got some light Virginias in there that have aged very nicely. I, I'm not a fan of light Virginias. They tend to be the, the tartar citrusy ones in my, in my experience. And again, I'm not a Virginia smoker, so take everything I say with a big grain of salt. But I think those have aged out nicely, and there's just this sort of high note to the sweetness, and then a nice depth underneath that. Hmm. Good stuff. I'd say get some, but you can't. So. And that's going to be the case for a while now, <clears throat> because I'm going through this mystery box of tobaccos that were sent to me. There's small samples that were sent, so they're probably things that were relatively rare. But if they're all as good as this, that'll be just fine. Last week, if you recall, was uh, it was Gowith uh, Brown Flake. No, oh, I'm sorry, Jermaine Brown Flake. And... Uh, you can see I've, I've done my job with that. There's just about one bowl is left, and that'll go into the 2023 bowl, uh, 2023 blend. The one prior to that was uh, John Patton's Oriental Dusk, and again, just about one bowl is left. That'll that'll go in. So this is this is working out well. Gives me something different to talk about. I got to get into the main topic here. Uh, sorry. Distracted by tobacco, who would have thunk it? So I had to go to the doctor's yesterday, uh, oddly on a Saturday. The reason being is uh, I had a problem developed last week. Uh, it's a minor thing. It's a it's a it's a toenail that you you don't need to know about. You don't tune in to hear about my medical problems. Come to think of it, what do you tune in for? Anyway, I had to go, I couldn't get a doctor's appointment with my doctor for until November 13th, I think. And I said, well, I'm a little worried about this. And they said, well, then go to the emergency care, not, not emergency room, but like the, what do they call these things? Emergent care or, uh, uh, there's another name for the one that I go to. Anyway, my doctor's office is associated with a hospital and the hospital has these Units that you can walk into uh, and get immediate care for, for something like if you, if you cut yourself or you have a, a cold or whatever. And it's sort of, a, a, I don't know, it's almost like a triage center for, for people. So they can say, you know, oh, you better go to the hospital with this or now nah, you can wait until the 13th. Anyway, <clears throat> I go in and this is nothing serious, but it was painful and, and it was I was concerned about infection. I'll, I'll leave it at that. So... They open at 8. I pull into the parking lot at 8.15 because I don't want to have to sit there and wait. And uh, no cars in the parking lot. I park, you know, turn off the radio and the kind of stuff I do before I get out of the car, put down my pipe, <clears throat> take a last drink of coffee, you know, all that good stuff. I get out of the car. And as I'm getting out of the car, I see another car pull into the parking lot. I close the door, I click the key thing. Uh, as I'm doing this, there's a young woman, and I'm going to say 19, maybe 20 years old, uh, driving, but apparently just old enough to drive, okay? Jumps out of the, the car, slams the door, and just as I'm starting to walk, she runs. <laughs> she runs to the door. She sees me, you know, we, we kind of make eye contact and she, she realizes that I'm going to walk to the door and she just takes off at a run. And it really bothered me, not because I had to wait. I, you know, but the fact is, if I got to the door first, even if I was like a, a minute ahead of her, my dad, my granddad made it so that it is impossible for me to not open that door and wait for her to walk through it. I, I just, that's, that's in my bones. I could not go into that room first. 
I don't care if she's 15 years old or 50 years old or 90 years old. I'm holding that door for that woman, girl, whatever. Females go first. <laughs> okay, maybe if she was 15, I wouldn't. I don't know. I'm, I've never had that situation occur. But my dad and granddad did not give me an age cutoff, so... I mean, even when I'm out with my, like my niece when they were young, um, I would open the door for them. That's just what you do. Oh, anyway. So she runs, <laughs> she runs to the door. By the time I get there, she's at, the, there's like a little triage uh, counter that you have to go to to check in. And she's there. Uh, by the way, she's wearing a, a mask. A, a surgical mask, not a Halloween mask. Uh, be hilarious if she was wearing a Halloween mask. So she, 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 <laughs> she's at the thing, and I go and I'm, you know, just standing there waiting, and and she's coughing and and puffing and hacking, and I thought, my goodness, you know, what what is you're talking about? Maybe a 15 minute delay in your day, and you're sick. She was she coughing pretty badly. And you're going to run to beat an old guy to the door? I, uh, I don't know. Something's very wrong. Something's very wrong in a world where that's normal. So I waited 15 minutes and... Yeah. Well, it was only like five minutes until I got the check-in. Uh, and then it was about a 15-minute wait. She went into the doctor's office. It's not really a doctor's office. It's one of these strip mall type things. But she went into the examination area, I guess you would call it, about 15 minutes before I did. Not a big deal for me. And again, it's what would have happened if she didn't run. That That's the thing that bothers me. So should I be more bothered that this girl thought that was okay to do? Or should I, or thought it was necessary to do? Yeah. Should I be more bothered that she lives in a world where a man wouldn't hold the door for her? I don't know. I don't know. But you know, I look around the world and I see you know, that, that email from Daniel and thinking about the things going on there and everywhere else and the, the nonsense in politics these days and, and the way people are acting. And I just think, you know, kind of glad I'm old. Kind of glad I don't have to put up with this for another 60 years. If I was in my early 20s right now, I'd be doing everything I could to try to buy an island. I'm mean, going to buy it, in, or, or a large piece of land in, you know, central Pennsylvania, north, north central Pennsylvania, or Wyoming, or some place where I can just sit in the middle of it and the people will leave me alone. Become a hermit. Anyway, that's my story. So today, uh, busy day. Got a lot of stuff to catch up on. A lot of I'm gonna to try to do some yard work because it's 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 fifty fifty five I think is gonna be the high, uh, so it's not not a warm day. But I gotta get the stuff done. It's it's almost Halloween, and I'm working on a Halloween video. I hope I'm gonna get it done so that I can release it sometime next week. We'll see. It's not. I'm rushed for this one. I missed last year and, uh, you know, cause of my dad passing around that time and everything. Uh, this year I'm, I'm rushing a bit to get it done cause I, I just haven't had the time. So it's not going to be up to the standards of my previous ones. And if you haven't seen my previous ones, uh, I've got a playlist of Halloween videos. So go, go check them out. They don't get a lot of views and I think you'll enjoy them if you like Halloween. Uh, if you've already seen them, then you don't need to watch them because that would get boring. Uh, 
But anyway, this one is not going to be up to those standards, but I think you'll find it interesting. And on Friday, this coming Friday, we're going to have our annual Halloween party. I still don't know what that means, but <laughs> I'll put up some decorations. We'll uh, we'll talk about Halloween type stuff. Maybe we'll do Halloween trivia. I haven't figured out how to do a trivia contest again, so we're not going to have a contest, but we'll we'll keep points and they'll be worthless and it'll it'll be a good time. So join us uh, Friday night. 8 p.m. Eastern, and we'll uh, we'll have some spooky fun. Maybe I'll tell a ghost story. That could be fun. Maybe I'll read The Raven. That'll bore everyone to death. Don't get me wrong. I, I love The Raven. I, I think it's a wonderful poem. Uh, I love Poe, and certainly it fits this time of year, but it's just overdone. I love the line. I actually used it for the bumper for the uh, video last Friday. Uh, the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain. The, the, is it alliteration? The use of the S sound over and over in there. Silken, sad, uncertain rustling. It's a uh, get you. But Poe was quite insane. And I've probably talked long enough. So. I'm going to finish this up. Finish up my coffee and get on with the day. Probably edit some videos. Edit some bits of movies to uh, insert into the Halloween video. So it gives you an idea what sort of thing we're going to be doing. I got a lot of video editing to do today. If I want to get this thing out next week. So let me get on with it. Thank you for watching. Uh, really appreciate that. If you're still here, like and subscribe. It helps the channel, but it also helps get the word out about the YouTube pipe community, which I think is more important. So uh, please do that. Uh, always love your comments. And I hope you have a fantastic Saturday. You're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.